This episode of the YN Crew podcast is brought to you by Times Cineplex. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Wyan Crew Podcast. Yay! That's right; it's your weekly podcast where we talk about all things movies, and of course, movies that are playing here in Brunei Darussalam. I'm your host Kev, and up next, it's my co-host, it's Dell. Yo, what's up? Uh, I'm good. It's a hot day. It's, it is a very hot day. I was out since morning until now. Wow. So we're recording in the afternoon, late after, late-ish afternoon, and uh, yeah, I've been out since morning. It's really hot. So do you appreciate that this room is very cold? Oh right yeah, now? of yeah. course. Good. Oh. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Especially when my car's <laughs> aircon is not as cold as this room. Okay, but that's on you. I know. <laughs> that's, that's it's your a, problem. The, it's the old car. Ah. If it's not moving, it's like hot air. Up next, it's our new co-host to the show. It's Naz. Hello. Hello. I had a milkshake. You had a milkshake. <laughs> yeah. I know. We were talking about it just before yeah, we hit record. It's from Express. You were uh, your yesterday. You had that milkshake as well. Yeah, I had. <laughs> I'm on a milkshake crawl. Yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. Three days ago, I was in Syria at Burgers and Grills for the milkshake too. Is it one a day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Keeps me going. Yeah. If it is your first time listening to the show, this is, of course, a movie podcast based in Brunei. And uh, yeah, you're probably listening to us on either iTunes podcast, Google Play Music, Spotify, or TuneIn Radio, Ooh. or even from Speaker, and maybe even on YouTube. We're, we're everywhere now, guys. Yeah. Ooh. Well yeah. done, Kevin. <laughs> well done. It's not just me, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> but you put it up on all these platforms. That's right. I love this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to get it to the first bit of the show, which is the news and uh, we talked about this last week how Arnold Schwarzenegger went for open heart surgery it was an emergency, yeah. uh, emergency operation he's now awake and is recovering well oh that's good he's back yeah he's back he's back <laughs> he, he really back. is he's, he's back. back and uh, he actually put out a tweet and I'm quoting it he says it's true I'm back <laughs> <laughs> did you think I went to sleep expecting to wake up with a small incision and woke up with a big one. But guess what? I woke up and that's something to be thankful for. Oh. I thought you would use his voice. No. That is that. something to be thankful for. <laughs> I don't know. She, she will. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. That, that's good news. And we wish you a speedy recovery, Mr. Schwarzenegger. And because of this, Paramount has delayed Terminator 6. Now, oh. they, now they say that it has nothing to do with Arnold's emergency surgery and sure. that it's because they want everyone to be available. Uh, but do you believe this? No. Studios tend to lie. Yeah. <laughs> But not saying that this is the one time that they are lying as well. Okay. I don't know. But I, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't... I, as long as the movie comes out. Yeah. It's Terminator <laughs> and it has lost its spark already. So I don't know if uh, a lot of people are still anticipating this movie. I don't know. Are you... How how high is your anticipation? On a scale of 1 to 10, maybe 7. 7? Oh, well, that's not that's bad. That's not bad. Yeah. I'm not like, whoa, it's coming out. No, I'm like, oh, cool, it's coming out. Because because we've talked about this on the show on previous episodes, and we understand that this is going to be a direct sequel to the second Terminator. Yeah. Terminator oh, 2. okay. So it's not um skinny. Nick. Oh uh, yeah, Nick him. Stoll, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not skinny. No, no. Guy. Yeah. Uh, what? No, I thought <laughs> Who's he's the skinny guy. No, no. I thought he. I didn't find his performance very John Connor yeah very John okay. Connor so it's like skinny uh, skinny John Connor I, I read somewhere that they are gonna officially title this as Terminator 3 oh, really which <laughs> is crazy you but know it's what? a rumor this is like that movie Last Action Hero yeah uh, where you go into this alternate universe and there's that movie but it's a different name and a different uh, actor yeah I mean, it, it's, it's yeah. sort of like that I'm yeah. just saying this because I recently watched it wait um, who's <laughs> gonna be John Connor uh, they haven't announced that yet but uh, Linda Hamilton will be reprising her role as Sarah Connor and uh, of course Christian Arnold- Bale <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and of course Arnold Schwarzenegger will be back to oh. reprise his role as the T-800 oh, of course so there we go Grandpa T-800 <laughs> <laughs> uh, we watched uh, Ready Player One yeah yeah last week yes and we have our review episode up. Overall, good movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It has topped the box office on its debut what? weekend. 
it. Yeah, so that means that Pacific Rim Uprising was only there for a week. Yeah. It's okay. At the top. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Going into summer season, this will be the case for a lot of movies. Like, you I come out this so, yeah. week, you're number one. Next week, you'll be somebody else. And, it, you yeah. know, it's just everyone sort of jostling for the number one spot. Yeah. It yeah. just depends on how long they stay on the chart. Yeah. In which case, you know, we have Black Panther, who has been there at mm. this point for about seven weeks now. That's nice. Seven weeks. However, this weekend, I don't know. It may still be Ready Player One. Yep. It Unless is. A Quiet Place can top that, but I don't uh, think so. I don't so. think so. Which is a movie that we're talking about this week. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> we did not mention this at all okay. in the beginning. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We're just so excited to jump into it. Any of you Matt Damon fans? No. Sure. Sure. No. Yeah, I, I, mean, I watch his he's movies. He's got some good movies. He some has bad some movies. good movies, but not a fan. Now, it was rumored that Matt Damon passed on a role in the upcoming Homecoming sequel. Oh. What? As a... Yeah. <gasps> This is a rumor. I mean, we haven't confirmed it. There's no way to confirm it unless he says it. But yeah, I mean, the news is out there Whoa. that he passed on a role. What do you think he would have been? A, a, a lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Finally yeah. fulfilling his destiny as as from Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, from Goodwill. <laughs> okay. Oh, he could have yeah. been um, the professor. Professor... Uh... Like, um, who? Uh, lizard. Lizard, lizard guy. Yeah. Uh... I forgot his name. Oh, Connor? First Connor. First. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. He's too... He's He's too burly. He's too good looking to be yeah, a professor. Yeah, I, I don't know if that will work. He's the uh, hot professor. <laughs> I like the professor <laughs> in the um, Tobey Maguire ones. Tell me about Maguire ones. Oh, um, that professor. The Doc Ock? Yeah, no, no, no. no. The the other. Doc Ock was Alfred Oh, uh, was... no, the first one. The lizard man. The he... first, the professor. Connor. Yeah. He, uh, but he didn't Irvin... become a lizard in oh. Tobey Maguire. Oh, Tobey Maguire one. Yeah. Oh, which the... one is that? It's um, uh... he... Checked the microscope for symbiotes. Yeah, I, pl- I can't remember his face. He yeah. is, he's Dr. Connor Venom, as well. For Venom, yeah. <laughs> Venom. Okay, if you guys know, you can you know send us your answers <laughs> on the show. Yeah. We'll give you the deets later on. <laughs> John Boyega has reportedly met with Marvel Studios. What? Oh, yeah. well, but then it is. Would it be for Star Wars? Marvel Studios? No. For Marvel? Yeah, this is oh. for Marvel. I mean, he's he's tied up with Disney at this point for Star Wars. Yeah, yeah so uh-huh. he's, he's uh, auditioning for the same role as Matt Damon as the lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not Matt Damon then maybe this younger what do you want but the rumor here is that he is earmarked to do a reprisal of Blade oh that's a maybe that's just a rumor you know we have no way to well, confirm yeah. it that's interesting just because he's black doesn't mean it's Blade straight away yeah <laughs> I mean he could be in another Black Panther movie maybe but Black that, Panther 2 that was the running theory ah. before Black Panther came out they thought that oh. he would you know play a small role or maybe be planted in that movie mm. but now you know the rumor mill has started and they're saying it's for Blade, Blade. Uh, vampires he'll need to buff up he'll lot. definitely need to buff up uh, lose weight as well they, I mean. they'll need to tone down as well yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's got yeah. like a big jaw and I don't know. Yeah, yeah doesn't he does not have the face of a superhero, I feel. Mm. Oh. He looks like my <laughs> brother. Yeah, yeah, he's more of a brotherly type. Like very br- warm. Bruv. Bruv. Yeah. He's more of a bruv <laughs> type. Hey bro. <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> So everyone wants a solo movie of all these superheroes. Here's one actor who doesn't want a solo movie. Mm. It's Elizabeth Olsen, Scarlet Witch. Oh, uh, yeah. She was asked recently whether or not there was a solo Scarlet Witch movie in the works. And she says, I don't know. And to be frank, oh. I, I, I don't want to do a solo movie. Okay, because when you said solo, I, my head immediately went to solo a Star Wars story. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she doesn't like solo. Uh, uh, Han Solo. Her own movie. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, she's smart because they're She's not smart. making one. Okay. They're definitely not giving her a solo movie. I think it's because she doesn't want to play a whole movie just, just her yeah. with that accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so hard. And what would it be about? Her and Vision? No, she's got to be... Yeah, well, if you're going to make a solo, then you got to bring yeah. in Vision. And, and that relationship. Flashbacks of, you know, Pietro. Oh, maybe. Maybe, huh? Yeah, but here's what she said uh, when she was asked. She said, we are at ground zero. It's definitely not something she's pushing for. I don't know if it's something they're going to push either. But Paul Bettany and herself joked about having a domestic television show on Netflix or something. <laughs> it would just be like a house event where Scarlet Witch goes bananas. That's uh, what we've joked about. But 
I don't think either of those things are happening. Mm. Yeah. So, no. It's probably yeah. an episode of her with Paprika again. <laughs> with what? Paprika. <laughs> <Okay>. Paprika. <laughs> Paprika. Moving into Avengers news, I sent this to you guys last night on WhatsApp. It was the poster. Yes. The IMAX poster IMAX. that was released by IMAX. And we just watched the IMAX trailer. Yes. Full frame, 16 by 9. Mm-hmm. None of that letterbox cutting yeah. going on. And as IMAX themselves say, it's 26% more. Yep. And I am very jealous of Dell, who will be watching it in IMAX. Max. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's 20 per- 26% more awesome things on the screen. <laughs> yeah. We were looking we are watching yeah. the trailer. Yeah. IMAX and non IMAX and yeah. uh Dra- you could see Drax's head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from from the back, yeah. the back shot, and, yeah. the, and the top of Groot's head, yeah. and the Wakanda scene. Yeah, more. Look, yeah, look, more, look epic. more epic. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's that's what I was going for. Ah, epic. epic. <laughs> so the IMAX poster that were, that I sent out to you guys yesterday, yeah. released by IMAX themselves, assembles almost every hero. We still don't see Hawkeye, hmm. and we maybe don't see Ant Man. Yeah. Um, there are rumors that are going around that Ant Man is in there. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you can't see him. I don't know. So, this yeah. is so like... apparently the rumor which Dell is brought up is that Ant-Man was spotted in the Infinity War poster which was released by IMAX yesterday. He's on the gauntlet. He's on what? the thumb of the gauntlet. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah, there was a, a <clears throat> Twitter it's... there was a Twitter uh, user called Boss Logic who zoomed in and tried to enhance it a little bit and he what? tweeted out and to a hashtag Infinity War saying that this might be it. No, if you know Boss Logic, know of Boss Logic. Okay, Sorry, okay. I'm, I don't mean I know Boss Logic himself. <laughs> okay. um, he creates a lot of artwork oh, okay, okay. on all these like uh, popular pop culture stuff and his artwork are really, really good and I believe he just inserted there. Ah. Oh. It's not real. So this might be a ruse. Yeah. It's all fake. That, fake, that he's, fake he's got the internet like on fire because some people may not know him like Stanley. He tweeted out as well this rumor. Yep. And, uh, but uh, I like the poster, you know. It's got everyone there. It's got like over 20 characters and yet it does not look bad yeah I guess that's the <laughs> best it's you can well designed <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want to watch the movie this is similar to that Chinese poster that we talked about last right, week right right where you know you can't hide it anymore everyone's gonna be in there although they are still omitting certain characters like Hawkeye and the Russo brothers are saying that you know that's that's for a reason it, it's just it's not because we forgot him <laughs> he will be in the movie it's just that you know we're leaving him out of all the promotions for a reason right uh, tied into the story what if he's the real hero <laughs> what that would be kind of amazing, actually. <laughs> or he's well, the first one to die in oh the first no. five minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, okay, the Russo brothers who are directing Avengers Infinity War has asked fans not to spoil the movie. Um, I don't see how this is going to happen. No, no? People are going to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. People are going to tweet about it. Yeah. Like G and Facebook. Yeah, but they tweeted out a photo of a letter which they yeah, both signed. Is- uh, and Thanos' glove Demands Infinity your silence Yeah He says To the greatest fans in the world We're about to embark On the Avengers Infinity War press tour We will be visiting fans All over the world Screening only a limited amount Of selected footage From the film In order to avoid Spoiling the story For future viewers We will not screen the film In its entirety Until the LA premiere Shortly before the film's Global release Everyone involved Has worked very hard Yada 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 only a handful of people know the film's true plot. We're asking that you, the fans, uh, when you see the Infinity War film in the coming months, that you maintain the same level of secrecy so that all fans can have the equal experience when they watch it for the first time. Mm. In today's world, I don't think that works. Nope. There will always be that that one guy, yeah. quote unquote, yeah. who wants to spoil it for people. Yeah, just <laughs> so. to sh- just to show that they've watched it. Yeah. Wait, stay uh, away. Are from... we are we in that group? Because this is. This podcast what? is based on reviews. No, of we we can we make a disclaimer. Oh, okay, so yeah, we Spoiler we want alert. we stop. want everyone. Yeah, stop. yeah, we put out a warning oh, first. Yeah. Press stop now. <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be that guy as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, that... you've been warned. <laughs> we put that in. You've been warned we, on the on the title. You've yeah. been warned. You've been warned. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's not only the directors, the Russo brothers, who are asking fans not to spoil. The stars have joined in as well. Yeah. The stars of the movie. But but I think it was for Tom Holland. Yeah, it was because <laughs> he spoils a lot. <laughs> and he he sort of par- he sort of jabbed at the Russo brothers, saying yeah. that that letter was originally addressed to him. Yeah, this was based on the script, yeah. which he accidentally took home yeah. during Civil War, and then he leaked I, a bit, and he publicly burnt it. 
you know, he had a video of yeah. him. I don't believe it. all these things. <laughs> it's 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 a marketing stunt. Really? What has he spoiled in the for for the, the first um, time that he spoiled? What it was? I think it? he it was at Comic Con or something. Like it was at a panel, uh-huh. and then everyone was just glaring. What, at did, he, he, what did he say? Do you remember? I don't, I don't know. It was something to do with the Infinity War. Oh really? Thing. I've never I heard of know. this one. And or was it know. during an interview? And he also spoiled the poster. Uh, apparently, yeah. apparently, because you know, because he, he's yeah, no. he's excited. He's I don't think boy. so. <laughs> so Mark, what the the poster was sent by Mark Ruffalo to him, yeah. as a gift, and then it on the note it says don't show this to anyone, yeah. But it was too late because he already showed it first on his camera, like uh-huh. a live feed, yeah. on Instagram, oh, yeah, yeah. And an then he story. saw the note and he's like, uh oh, <laughs> I don't believe that. I, don't, I kind of he's no. a he's a huge fanboy. Yeah, but no. Yeah. But the uh, one thing that you know really excites me or uh, puts some perspective as a fanboy to all the this this uh, the success of Avengers and Marvel superheroes is that he reminisced about how the first time he went to watch the first Avengers movie yeah. with yeah. a friend and then to now where he is part of the Avengers it's like yeah. so surreal and it's it's amazing it's like igniting something something inside the fanboy of me like there's hope yeah there's no, hope. I'm not, I, I'm not I saying be, I, I will be in the I next I could be Spider Gwen <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, the Russo brothers have also said that fans should be scared of the title for Avengers 4. Now, it's not out yet. Mm. Okay, obviously. It's scheduled for release next year, 2019. And this is because of a tweet sent by Everything Marvel who said, The fact that the Russo brothers won't give us the Avengers 4 title because it spoils Infinity War scares the hell out of me. And the Russo brothers replied saying, It should. Mm. Mm. The title will be Avengers the final movie on Earth. The final movie on Earth. Because <laughs> after this, they all they're going cosmic. After this, they're not going to be on Earth anymore. I don't know. I mean, mm. we can sit here for ages trying to theorize, but I think we'll have a better idea after we watch yeah. Infinity War. Yeah. Maybe Return we, of we shall see. Mm. <laughs> all right, Solo and director Ron Howard replacing the two failed directors. I won't say failed. I would say that they were removed by Disney for you know conflict of ideas, maybe or yeah. vision. Yeah. Removed with force. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Ron Howard says that the uh, film is edited and it is locked. Now he's mm. saying this in terms of the movie and the score. Mm. Locked. Yeah, locked meaning that, you know, he's... It's all done. It's all done and... No more changes. No more yeah. changes, no, no more, more reshoots. Shoots. Yeah. I, I'm finding it very hard to get excited for this movie. So long. Yeah. 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 It's, it's coming out in May yep. and we saw the standee this mm, week mm-hmm. at Time Cineplex. The, yep. the one that I talked about in previous episodes where it was the inside yeah. of the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw it and I, I just stood there and I was like, I, I'm not... Feeling it. It's not, it's not wowing me. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and I don't know why. Could it be because of all the controversy that has happened I don't know with Star Wars I think the marketing has not ramped up yet because of Avengers yep. so after yeah. Avengers then maybe they'll give it a final push and yeah. then we'll see more footage maybe and see more of the uh, actor who will be playing uh, Han Solo uh, we talked about Star Wars let's uh, shift over to Star Trek anyone here a Trekkie? no no not really okay. only for the new trilogy <laughs> oh yeah same same yeah, for me yeah. here's someone who doesn't think that the Quentin Tarantino film should be made <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's the guy who played Riker, Jonathan Frakes. He played a Riker in the TV series, and he says that <laughs> no idea who he is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I think he was in like one or two of the movies as well. And he says he doesn't think that Tarantino's take on Star Trek will get made. So he has his doubts. Uh. I I kind of want to see it, but I don't know whether I really want to as a fan or just as a moviegoer because I'm curious. It's really out of left field for Tarantino to be going to Star Trek because I cannot, for the life of me, see yeah. him <laughs> of his vision for Star Trek. But if he is just writing, maybe. No, he's writing. If he's, dir- he's directing, directing. Is that is that confirmed already? Well, it's, it's not confirmed, but you okay. know, he, he's pegged to do it. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. It's hard. Uh, You're right because because you have like Reservoir Dogs guy, Pulp Fiction guy, <laughs> yeah. Django guy, and Take then his Star most... Trek. You're like, I don't. What? I don't know. I don't know. I can't imagine it. Maybe if 
Star Trek was like a Western. Like, yeah, went it's going to be a, like a dirty Star yeah. version. Not, not, not that dirty. No, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like... They, they go to... Gritty, gritty. gritty that's yeah. what you mean. If they go to a planet where yeah. it's like all sand... Or they yeah. went like, back in time travel and... And it's the Western. Like they've done before in previous yeah. Star, Star Trek movies. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. But, uh, I don't know, yeah. If they, if they go to a planet like Tatooine, they could have a Western episode there. Okay. Maybe. Horses as well. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> maybe not a horse, but maybe something like, you know, that that thing in The Last Jedi. So it's going to be a bit like Cowboys versus Aliens. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Batman. Now, this movie is uh, a movie that's been kicked around oh, for the last Batman. two years, maybe, uh, oh. since Batman versus Superman. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck was pegged to direct it at one point, and then he was taken off the project, and then he was going to write it, and then they got Matt Reeves in to direct, and Matt Reeves said that I'm not going to use Ben Affleck's script. Matt Reeves was asked on Twitter how the Batman movie was going, and he responded, It's going really, really well. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay, what a professional answer. Lies. <laughs> what What else is he going to say? <laughs> yes! <laughs> After two weeks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, I, he's not going to say, uh, no, I don't know what's happening, or I'm, I'm already off the project. Of course, he has to say, oh, it's going very well, just keep waiting. Yeah. <laughs> For the next five years, maybe, it'll come out. That's like the biggest lie ever. Yeah. Really, really No, well. nothing has been heard about this. There At has all. been no progress. No. Yeah. Warner Brothers has not come out and say, okay, this is definitely coming out. Yeah, this is the date. Yeah, and Ben Affleck is definitely or definitely not playing <laughs> Batman. Oh. Ben Affleck himself hasn't said anything. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's been really quiet about this. It's, it's, it, I think it's in limbo. <laughs> so that's a movie that may not be happening. Here's a movie that apparently is happening. Uh, the Flash's solo movie. Ooh. Okay. Will <laughs> not be titled Flashpoint. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, what is happening? So, what? Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. So, an article from Hollywood Reporter noted that the, one of the writers, Dan Mazeo, he worked on the upcoming Flash film when it was titled Flashpoint, indicating that that title has since changed. Mm. Now, we're not sure whether this means that the film story has changed. <sighs> But one of the writers of the article, he tweeted out later on to say that he didn't say that they were adapting Flashpoint. All he said is that it wouldn't be titled Flashpoint, but maybe he said too much. Is this another viral article thing that they're trying to do? I feel like maybe they're, it's got Flashpoint, but like it's not solely based on the comics, so they don't want to use the name. Otherwise, maybe. fans would be like, that's not Flashpoint, you know. Oh, so they're sort of saving themselves from the backlash. Yeah. Possibly. It could be. It could be. <laughs> They're, they're, they're thinking way too far at this point. <laughs> they, they, for the first time, they are thinking of how to cover their tracks if something doesn't go well. Yeah, if it doesn't because go well. from the from the past, they have always just announced stuff, yeah. announce, 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 and then later on, nothing happens. Yeah, nothing strict to plan. And also, if this is covered by the Hollywood Reporter, I will put more um, faith in that this is a real report, and they are definitely not going with Flashpoint anymore. Yeah, but when I I'm hearing this right now. It means that they are not using the story of Flashpoint. So they may, like uh, Nas said, change certain things from the story yeah. plot of Flashpoint. What I'm afraid now is Flashpoint was the perfect way to change the DC yep. universe. Yeah. Put, put it back on the right track. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But now that they are having second thoughts about it, means that they may go. They may want to go back and use all these um, existing Sorry. characters and stories that they have yeah. already set up in Justice League and BVS. Mm. to move forward with that which could or could not be a bad idea we yeah. don't know but because Wonder Woman works yeah. Aquaman has a good potential that it will work because we haven't heard anything yes yeah. from what I have seen so far the actors are great Yeah, it's just the story yeah, that story. did not work it, the story is the one thing that lets all these movies down like Batman vs Superman mm. yeah. I mean it was the writing it was the pacing it was yeah. all off and then you had Wonder Woman come in yeah. and and it was for all intents and purposes good yeah 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 yeah. so um, yeah. moving forward I would not want them to change the actors I am liking the the cast that they have right now even though let's see what Aquaman brings to the table first like, and Jason Momoa but I would prefer them to stick to what they have and then yeah. change some stuff using Flashpoint yeah stay in there Batman yeah, yeah. yeah but maybe because they are not going to bring 
are they going to keep Ben Affleck? Because Flashpoint does change Bruce Batman. Wayne yeah. into his father, yeah. Thomas Wayne. Because um, Bruce is the one. Who yeah, dies, but guys. then <laughs> in, in the more common place of um, moviegoers, their sense of who Batman is, it's always been Bruce Wayne. So changing it to Thomas Wayne may create uh, too much some kind of, of a, confusion. Too much of a shift. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So maybe that's why they don't want to use Flashpoint. But We um, shall see. It, yeah. This, like, like I said like at the beginning of this, this might be just another viral article and you know they just want to see what the reaction is oh yeah you know they, oh, they, they, really they've done that. that they've done that for the last yep. year yep. moving on to a franchise which is successful and uh, no one really understands why <laughs> <laughs> the Fast and Furious franchise <laughs> it's either this or Transformers <laughs> yeah. oh, really Dwayne The Rock Johnson is unsure if he'll return for Fast and Furious oh, no. 9 he um, was the carry. He was the what? The carry. He was carrying the whole. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Back. I mean, he he boosted the franchise yeah, back and put it back on track. Where's the carry now? <laughs> For Fast and Furious Five, so he's been in five, six, seven, seven and, and eight. eight. Yeah. Uh, and wow. He, and he is currently doing a spin-off movie, Fast and Furious movie with Jason, Jason Statham. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> he's he's doing that now, and he's not sure whether he'll return to the franchise, which is the next movie, Fast and Furious Nine. He's citing creative differences and work. Uh, ethic with Vin Diesel now news about this came out during the production of Fast and Furious 8 oh. where they barely had scenes together where no they, they had one scene together which wasn't even shot yeah, together yeah which was they, and they used body doubles yeah. and they, they never shared the frame oh they don't like each other no, they, they are they having didn't. a family feud yeah because apparently it's not all about family yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay I don't know if, if well. he goes I, I don't know where this franchise is gonna go because if he goes then it's potentially the franchise could die. And that would be a good thing because this franchise is going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Let the let the tenth movie be the last one. Yeah, because Universal has ordered two more and that's, Oh my god, that, why are they that, that's supposed to be nine and ten. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. we have a running bet on the show where <laughs> by the time they get to ten, it's gonna be cars in space. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Because <laughs> there's is, gonna be aliens or something. No, because there already is a car in space. <laughs> Tesla. Oh yeah. Elon Musk did it, he put a car in space. Yeah. It's up there so they're gonna go there yep. I'm telling you yep. last bit of news this week on the podcast one of the favorite directors for Dell Shane Black oh yeah he is uh, coming with a new Predator movie Yes. And he tweeted out a teaser image and it shows that the movie takes place well, in space. Some, no. No. Okay. <laughs> in a <the> jungle. <laughs> <laughs> it should be in a jungle. Yeah. But, but they are bringing Predator to the city. Yeah. Right. I, I, I don't know. They, they said urban setting and then yeah. he tweeted out a photo. It's a photo of a forest and the caption is, shh, he's coming. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to watch a new Predator movie. Yes. But uh. now I'm confused because initially they said it was going to be in an urban setting mm. and now he tweeted out a jungle thing. Hmm. Uh, are we going to do the movie both? in both settings? Yeah, maybe it's in Asia. No. <laughs> well, it doesn't look like a rainforest. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh that no. kind of forest. I'm excited for it because it's Shane Black. Yeah. But I really hope they keep it mostly in the jungle. That's where, that's it, where the uh, first, it first began. Yeah. The first Predator where, movie. Yeah, and that's the excitement of it. I don't know if you agree with me, but I think that the Predator looks right in a jungle setting. Yeah, yeah. Right? Not in an urban setting. Yeah. Definitely not fighting alien as well. Well, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm okay with that movie. <laughs> All right, so that's the news this week on the Wine Crew Podcast. If you want to get in touch with us here on the show, you can do so via our Gmail account. That's thewinecrew at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube as well. And you can check us out on our new outlets, which is iTunes Podcast, Google Play Music, TuneIn Radio, and Spotify. So there you go, guys. Now we're going to move on to our review this week, which is a review of a movie we watched called A Quiet Place. Yeah. Which uh, apparently is a very good place. Yeah. Uh, no? Quiet no. is always good. Quiet is always good. Yeah, okay, so oh, no. <laughs> we're gonna do a non spoiler review okay. first and then followed by a full spoiler review. So A Quiet Place stars Emily Blunt, who plays Evelyn, and her husband in real life, John Krasinski, who plays also her husband in the movie, Lee. They have, well, they have two kids. First three, then two. Played by Millicent Simmons, who plays Reagan. <laughs> you and just then. Spoiled it. No, I didn't spoil it because no? one kid is seen to die in the trailer. Really? Yeah, the, the first trailer. Oh. That scene with the spaceship oh, that, that, yeah. that's where the first trailer was and the you know the thing comes wait there's a spaceship yes yeah. oh lord 
it. He was what? like, Pew! he was holding a little, the, the little oh, toy. Oh, oh, that spaceship. I thought the aliens arrived in the spaceship. No, 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 no. we don't know. It also stars Noah Jupe as Marcus, the, the second child in the family, yeah. and an unnamed third child who we just told you doesn't make it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So John Krasinski directed this movie. He also uh, is credited as a screenplay writer and yep. an executive producer. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so here's a surprise for you. I did not know this until I checked it out on IMDb. Michael Bay is also a producer on this movie. Yeah, yeah, I saw his name. Oh, you saw his name? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. Because uh, I was. So it's uh, in the beginning. It was um, the studio that made this was um, Bloomhouse. Okay, right, Bloomhouse, and then the next one is Platinum Dude, so which is Michael Bay's, Michael Bay's yeah. production okay, company. Okay. So we are thrusted into the story at day eighty nine. Oh, you remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. I, Friday, I don't yeah. remember. So we're introduced to the family as they're scavenging for supplies and this and that, and they're communicating using sign language, which is yeah. something that we see in the trailer. So we're not spoiling anything there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's it's I'm all sorry. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so you are like having to say that's not a spoiler. That's yeah, not a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> And also in the trailer, uh, there is a younger son who is maybe about four years old. And as a child, he's he he's curious. Yeah. He wants to get a toy. He almost makes noise. And from the trailer, we're told that the creatures, who we don't yep. really see very much in yeah, the trailer, react yep. to sound. React to sound. And everyone has to be quiet. quiet if yeah. not, they will come. So, so that's the premise of this movie. I love this movie. I think it's the second Blu-ray buy for me this oh, year. Oh, wow. You know? Okay. So this two, year? Two weeks in a row. I mean, okay. it was Ready Play One and uh, now it's A Quiet Place. What, you mean in 4K? Yes. Ah. More for the DTS HD or the Dolby Atmos, you know, because this movie uses sound, you know, in certain scenes, the lack of sound. Yeah. yeah. To put you in certain mind frames, like, oh no. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it I was, they, they use the sound and the, the score very effectively. Yeah. To build up tension or to bring it back down, mm. and and I thought that was that was brilliant because mm. there were scenes in this movie where the character on screen would have had to hold their breath, yeah. and I found myself holding oh, my yeah, breath. Me too. I think just the just, whole theater, just not to breathe, to yeah. not to make any sound. Yep. Uh, what did you think of this movie, Del? I was telling my cousin just now that about this movie, and uh, he he's not that interested. And I'm saying maybe you should give it a try because it's something different, something that has never been done before. Because the entire movie is lack of sound. And yeah. He's like, huh? Even sound, they have to cut costs, ah. So <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I I know, but because there there are sound editing, they do put in the when there is sound, they do have that little things in there that makes it like very. They do I mean attention to detail, yeah, yeah, right? very When it comes detail. to sound, and because there's also the the the, the uh, hearing, hearing aid, aid the, the hearing, hearing aid, aid when yeah. it's turned on and turned off. Because in the beginning, right? I didn't know this from the trailer. I didn't know that the youngest kid was killed. I didn't oh. know this. That's yeah. why I was surprised. Okay, and then also the way that. Krasinski introduced us to the daughter with hearing impaired the way that when it was her looking at the younger brother getting killed right she didn't know what's happening yeah. there was a blank look on her face because she couldn't hear, she can't hear anything, anything. Yeah. and then when she turned around we get the idea of what she's listening how or what she can't hear yeah. because of the hearing aid and then that was the sound of the hearing aid so there are a lot of uh, sound effects yeah, in yeah. this movie even yeah. though they are, there is very little dialogue and sound yeah. yeah and something that became very apparent as we watched the movie like things in this movie they're very cause and effect you know they're, they're very practical yeah. like if this thing happens you know that this thing is gonna happen yeah. Yeah. but the way they set it up in this world where you can't make noise mm. or mistakes or mistakes <laughs> yeah, is something that I've never seen before and which is why I, I love this movie Nas I, what I do thought, you have to say? I thought it was a brilliant movie even though uh, it stressed me out a lot during the movie I remember just hitting the chair yeah, so you, much you were shaking the chair I was yeah. shaking <laughs> the whole, the whole, the whole row. row felt <laughs> me shaking I I held my breath a lot during the movie. I didn't want to eat my popcorn because I didn't want to make a sound. I think the whole theater just <laughs> stayed quiet. So that's how the movie affected us as well. And the acting was brilliant. They did not have a lot of lines and they used body movement, facial expressions yeah. really well. And I felt that. I was like, oh. And then there was this one particular scene. Emily Blunt was just amazing during it. And I was like, ah, oh, that's so painful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we saw, well, that's before, but we saw a shot. Yeah. 
or certain shots in the trailer where she's in the bathtub yeah. and it's, it's on the poster yeah, so. and her facial expressions really do convey yeah, the that, pain the, the pain but the, the need to suppress yeah. that pain and, and yeah. not react and, yeah. yeah so good I would watch this movie again in the theatre that, that's how good it is and yeah. it, it's rare for me to watch a movie twice in the cinema but I think that watching it in the theatre where you have yep. you know the proper array of speakers and the full design of what the director and the production intent with yep. regards to sound yeah. is very apparent in the theatre and I'm quite curious to see how it plays out here at home yeah. uh, in, in my own little room yeah so maybe we jump into spoilers yeah. okay. okay okay spoiler alert All right, spoiler alert this is a full spoiler review for A Quiet Place there's not much we could have said for non-spoilers except that it was a good movie and it's something that you have to check out yourself yeah and, something uh, that you should watch in the cinema yeah and now we're gonna tell you why yeah <laughs> Okay, well, let, let's start from the beginning. They're all walking barefoot yeah. on this sand path. Mm. Like, yeah. like I mentioned this before, was like it was you know cause and effect. It's, it was practical, yeah. yeah. And you understood why they put sand down and they yeah. weren't wearing any shoes because you can't have footsteps. Yeah. Because these creatures who are extraterrestrial, I guess, yeah, we are never told where they came from. Yeah. Which is brilliant. Which yeah. is brilliant. Need to know. Yeah. Yep. Just, just throw us into the movie and we experience what this family feels. Yeah, yeah. because and they don't know as well. Yeah, they don't know as well. And the, the very next scene after that scene where the youngest kid dies yeah. is, I think, day 400 and something. And we see the father's character, John Krasinski's character, and how he's trying to figure out things. He's got newspaper clippings. He's written down things like, you know, what are they? Where are they from? What are, uh, how many? Are how many? There? How do they defeat them? What's yeah. the weakness? What is their weakness? I, I don't know what else I can say about this movie what did you not like about this what movie? did i not like about this movie <laughs> um i didn't like uh, that the dad had to die uh, yeah. i didn't like no i didn't like that because like the kid should have known that it was her hearing aid that pushed away the monsters it, it happened she, twice she should turn it on yeah she because like, she turned it off she did, yeah it's her fault <laughs> Um, so you're saying she killed her younger brother and also and the, the father <laughs> oh no I see I see where you're getting at yeah but then she redeemed herself towards the end when she found out like oh it's my fearing aid and I'm like oh you could have saved your dad <laughs> which she didn't want in the first place yeah because the dad was trying to give it to her yeah but she was angry at him for another reason she didn't want to use it yeah, yeah. Well, you know, power of love. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, yes, yes, yes. No, you see, the, the, when it comes to the, the relationship between the father and the daughter, and when you say the power of love, yes, because the father, and we don't see this very obvious, um, because I don't know whether it's because Krasinski's lack of experience in directing or because this is the as subtle as he wants it to be. The father still blames her for the death of the youngest yeah. son, but because he is still, he still has to. This is still the daughter, and the love for your child is always there yeah. so he is he has been struggling with uh, reconciling that emotion within him and the way that we see it is because he did not want her to go with them to the river yeah. that was yeah. number one yeah. number two was he disallowed her to go into the basement yep. and no reasons has been given to her or the audience and we or I was left with putting this together when I was thinking about uh, the movie after after I've watched it. So, but that sort of falls in line with how we're you know we're presented this movie. As mm. in, they don't really explain why it's like this or why certain things have happened. We just are dropped in, and this yeah. is how it is. Yeah. So we yeah. see that you know as John Krasinski's character as the father, how he sort of I, I wouldn't say shutting her out, mm. but limiting her to yeah. certain things yeah. because I believe that in his own way he is unable to. Speak spend time with her alone yeah because it hurts looking yeah because there's, there's that huge element in the room yeah. of yeah. you were the one that ultimately yeah. caused the death of our youngest child yeah. Yeah. yeah but then I guess she couldn't really understand as well like with yeah. the whole sound thing it, it, it might have been really hard to yeah. you know communicate that interesting fact about this movie that she actress is, yeah, she's really. actually deaf yeah. really yeah, yes oh, she, I did not she's know actually that. deaf and uh, according to John Krasinski he specifically wanted her because he wanted someone who could portray those emotions yeah you know as as someone who is deaf as yeah. someone who right who's frustrated with with yes. uh, the difficulties of hearing yeah. that's right yeah 
Let's talk a bit about Emily Blunt, who I think is brilliant. Brilliant, this... there. She's mm. amazing. Amazing. Oh. She is pregnant during the during Act Two of this movie. Yeah. And the baby is born prematurely, and it couldn't come at a worse time because it's when, when the she, monsters she, were... she drops something, and then that's that's sort of when the creatures who are around the house area yeah. come in, and they yeah. they start looking for. Her. And you know, we we see her trying to suppress her screams because she's in a lot of pain. She's in labor, and, and... she steps on a nail she stepped yeah. on a nail which she herself pulled up from the plank yeah uh, well, oh, she, unknowingly her scenes were so painful to watch painful they were really painful yeah and then the contractions yep. in the bathtub <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god I that's that's my biggest problem with this movie though I cannot understand because when we were first introduced to this world it was day 89 like you said and yeah. then we jump forward to 200 plus and then 400 plus right yeah. why in the world would you what? get pregnant <laughs> how in the world are you able to deliver a baby without any sound it does not make sense and not just that right after that for the next two years you gotta keep that baby really quiet yeah, yeah. If, because you can't control a baby you can't yeah. control him crying well they tried to sort of mitigate that situation which is why they had the padded room on the ground I understand that yeah, but yeah. that is a temporary solution you can't bring that baby outside yeah. if it utters a single word you will bring in chaos yeah, yeah. because in this movie you you are being introduced to these alien creatures who are really sensitive to sound. Yeah. So it would only make sense for you if you want to survive not to have a baby. Yeah. A, baby a baby that yeah. would cry in any time. Well, like you know, when you're sleeping it's crying and then you're dead. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes you know You need a plot. Th- these things happen. <laughs> yeah. You know? No, I, I'm, I'm guessing even, no. <laughs> no. This is like No, I mean even during times of war people do time of, conceive. Yeah, you, yeah, that's fine. Times of war <laughs> you can conceive because even when the baby is crying, you wouldn't attract your enemies that quickly. But this one, we see that once some... She dropped the picture yeah. onto the floor and then in comes the alien, okay. yeah. right? Yeah. And then she was delivering the baby, even though with fireworks. <laughs> the baby comes out. It's not crying. Uh. It's, she, she screamed and then, okay, fine, the baby comes out. The, the fireworks happen. Yeah. And then, but how, how long can the fireworks keep going? Yeah, yeah. The That's baby true. would still be crying once it comes out. That is true. That is true. I and then she closed closed its mouth I don't know I don't know (laughs) you would suffocate and then she she brought the baby into the the, from the bathtub she went into the shower Shower. I don't know how that helps because the the alien can't see they can only hear if you bring it to the the bathtub if the baby starts uh, I mean the shower Shower. room the baby starts crying the alien will be attracted as well you've got echoes yeah Yeah. Yeah. and then when they were there the father comes in he couldn't see them and then Emily Blunt's hand hits the shower (laughs) uh, screen. screen there was a thud <laughs> that thud was so loud I was scared from my chair. Where was the alien? Yeah. Oh well. There are some admittedly some inconsistencies. Yeah. But I don't like uh, But yeah. overall, overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, overall it was great. It's a good one. It was movie. great, great, great. great. <laughs> and, yeah. and to address your big question as to how you could consider even having a child in uh, in that world, I'm gonna go back and say it's power of love. <laughs> I'm guessing that's why the husband felt like he had to rush all his research and stuff, you know? What? What research? Like, he was trying to figure out what the weakness was, you know, how to... Yeah. I don't think he was rushing. I feel like... No, for me, like, he has this deadline to meet. It didn't seem apparent to us. No, maybe it's just me. Okay, maybe just you. Yeah. It was like Uh, researching and stuff. Alright, let's do our ratings for A Quiet Place, Dell. Even with all that flaw, but it's still fantastic, I will give it an eight nails in the floorboard. Eight nails in the floorboard. All right, Naz. Mm, maybe se- 7.5. What? Lower <laughs> than me? Um. Okay, okay. No, I'm just surprised. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, 7.5. Yeah. 7.5. Yeah, 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 I think that's an average score. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go with Dell and give it an 8 as well because this movie really got me going it, it, yeah. it, 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 there was tension there was suspense you felt for the characters yeah, it and it did all this you know without with you know saying minimal dialogue yeah. sound plays a very important bit in this movie and we do recommend that you watch this uh, at and your this, local cinemas yeah. and you know where should they watch it Time Cineplex, Time Cineplex. Cineplex. Yeah, catch it there I think it's still showing uh, this week uh, of course it is yes. before you know we get the big movie Avengers Infinity War which is coming out in uh, less than three weeks guys alright so that concludes our review of A Quiet Place 
All right, it's now time for our long-running MCU recap series, which we call Road to Infinity War. Today, we're doing Episode 7, and we will be talking about Captain America Civil War and Doctor Strange, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's get to it. Captain America Civil War, the third movie in the Captain America series, and I think one of the best movies in the MCU. Totally. Yeah? Yes. Like, everyone's in this. This is, in fact, Avengers 2.5. I feel like it's Avengers 3. Yeah? It's basically yeah. Avengers 3. But then the best part is still the Russo brothers direct. Yes. This is their second outing mm. as directors, and I think writers as well. Yeah. For... No, um, it was written by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was not written by them. So they just helmed the movie. Yeah. Uh, um, the movie. All the Captain America movies were written by the same two people. Even Infinity War is written by them. Okay, so if you haven't seen Captain America Civil War, well, where have you been, quite frankly? This is actually one of the biggest movies of 2016, if I'm not wrong. Uh, as I mentioned, third outing of Captain America, his own movie. But it doesn't feel like it because everyone's in this. And this is the movie where there was a very infamous Team Cap or Teen Iron Man publicity thing going on. Oh, yeah. Very quickly, before we talk about it, are you, which which side are you on, Del? Team Cap. Team Cap. Nikkei? Team Cap. Team Cap. Team Cap. I'm the only Team Iron Man. <laughs> okay. my, my reason for being on Team Cap is only because I'm a goody goody two shoe as well. Really? Yeah. I couldn't agree with Iron Man's vision for the Avengers, so I'm Team Cap. Quick uh, run through of this movie. This movie further divides the Avengers. I mean, we saw a little bit of that in the last Avengers movie where there was some division. Yeah. Like, there was, there was a little. Uh... I mean, I think from the first Avengers movie, Cap and Tony have always kind of not seen eye to eye. Yeah, yeah. Because um, Tony. Even the first Avenger yeah, yeah there was as a... in Avengers no yeah yeah, yeah remember um, when there was a scene the on plane. the helicarrier yeah. in uh, Dr. Banner's lab they were fighting uh, about ma- big man in a fancy suit take that away what yeah. are you oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The it's always been there billionaire playboy mm. something something yeah, yeah philanthropist yeah. Yeah. yeah in this movie it is further sort of solidified that there are two factions now Team Cap and Team Iron Man Team Cap are, are essentially fugitives in a way yeah. to the law mm. uh, because they do not agree with the Sokovia Accords, which were sort of needed because of the events of Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. Hence the name, uh, Sokovia Accords, because uh, the finale of that movie was in Sokovia, where there was a lot of damage uh, that was done by Ultron. And to prevent anything like this from ever happening again, the answer supposedly is for them to agree to the Sokovia Accords. Tony Stark is a big proponent of this. He says, yes, we have to do this. This is the only way to rein us in, to save the world from us, essentially. And to save the world from any other supers or... Yep. Yeah. Because he feels responsible. Because in uh, to, uh, in the beginning of the movie, there was this lady who came to him and said, yeah. my kid died in Sokovia. Which is why I couldn't get behind Team Iron Man, just because it was a very selfish reason to mm. police themselves. Yeah. yeah. Like he was like, oh, no, 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 I need to look good. Let's all police ourselves. It's yeah. like, yeah. yo, man, come on. Like he's given up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, know, yeah. Like, so I wasn't really a big fan of his yeah. philosophy. And Captain America, he, of course, follows what he believes is right, which is... No, we shouldn't sign this because why? Why should we? Yeah, you know, it's, we, yeah. it's we, like human rights. Yeah, and also so many, I think because at the center of this was also a political plot where the king of Wakanda was assassinated. Yes, yeah. I was about to get to that. King T'Chaka. We are introduced to him, and then he is very quickly assassinated by supposedly Bucky Barnes, aka okay, the Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Spoiler alert, if you have not watched this, you know, at the end of it, they find out it's not him. Mm. It's the villain of this movie, which is Captain Zemo. And his motivations for being a villain in this movie, they're, they're kind of warranted. Like, you you get where he's coming from because yeah. his family perished yep. during the attack in Sokovia. And he's sort of out to get revenge. Yep. And he says this in the movie, like, the best way to break you guys was to break you guys from within. Yeah. Yeah. And I did that. You know? And we see that in the last, I mean, the last scenes of the movie. But just to backtrack a little bit on... Uh, uh, fact checking is th- was he Captain Zemo? Uh, so I think he was Sergeant Sergeant Zemo. Mm. I think well, I, I don't think he in, reached in Captain. the comics. He was. I mean, he's known as he's Baron. Baron. Yeah. yeah, Baron. Okay. But, but not in, in this the... one, it was a military background. Yeah, yeah. Like he was a military background. He was off. He was not in Sokovia. He was on no, duty. He was on duty yeah. somewhere else. And then he kept playing the recording of his wife. The the, f- uh, the voice message. Mail. The voicemail. Yeah. yeah. This is the movie, of course, where we first get our glimpse of T'Chaka. As the oh, Black T'Challa. Panther. T'Challa, sorry. As Black Panther. As Black Panther. Oh, oh and a very good chase scene. Yeah. Uh, on the streets of Berlin, I think. The... Yes. 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 Uh, chasing after Winter Soldier, we have Captain America who is trying to yeah. not let Black, Black Panther, Panther get him, yeah. but yeah. at the same time not, not letting Winter Soldier get away yeah. kind of mm. thing. This is the movie where we found out that they can run faster than cars. Pretty much. <laughs> <yeah>. Pretty much. <laughs> it is Captain America. <laughs> it also yeah. gave the world what I think is a definitive Spider-Man. Tom Holland. Yes. Yeah. 
yeah. he made yeah, his true. debut in the film. Surprise debut, actually. Yes. Uh, we only see him towards the third quarter of the movie. Yes. The uh, airport scene. In the very famous yeah. The very famous scene. airport scene. That was shown scene. in the trailer, I think. Yeah. yeah. Somebody he... was shown in the trailer and uh, people lost their minds when, yeah. when they saw him, you know. Oh, at the yeah. end, like, hey, everyone. <laughs> yeah. that was. I thought that was amazingly done. <laughs> yep. Um, because the moment I saw him um, catching the shield and goes, hey, everyone, I thought that was very, very, very special. Very Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, so and I think also... Also, uh, this is the movie that gave us Giant Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was a Star Wars reference to how to bring him down. Yep. <laughs> Those walking things yeah. in the snow. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the very... really, really old movie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys ever seen this really old Star Wars movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where these walking things? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, my God. And then, and then uh, War Machine goes, how old is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> how old yeah, is yeah. this guy? <laughs> I, I felt old when he said that. Yeah, like, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So yeah, we first get a glimpse of Black Panther and of course we introduce to Tom Holland as Spider-Man who we'll talk about later on in the series. What else can we say about this movie, Captain America Civil War? Uh, the motivation behind Zemo was really good but the execution, the way he planned the whole thing, the way he got Captain America and Iron Man together to go find him on a piece of rock or something. Uh, it was like a it's military... A hidden- storage in research Siberia. facility thing yeah in yeah. Siberia in Siberia yeah. yep okay so that part that whole thing I don't know it just came together so conveniently for plot wise for Zemo for Zemo yep. but then that's just the only complaint I have about this movie is that it's a little convenient but after that everything was fantastic as we got the showdown between Captain America and Iron Man which completely overshadowed Batman versus Superman yeah. I was literally gonna go there yeah. that <laughs> was that was like the last few scenes of the movie where there's there's like a three-way showdown mm. and it's between Captain America and Winter Soldier and Iron Man and the reason why it happens is because it's finally become apparent to Tony Stark that the Winter Soldier was responsible for the death of his parents yeah. and uh, there's that line where he goes like he didn't know he killed my mom Yeah. so and then it's on Yeah. alright good movie I loved it. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I... um, my only problem... Okay, so, you know, a lot of people were very focused on the airport fight. Um, but I think the heart of the fight was in Siberia. Yes. yes. It was just these two old colleagues, comrades kind of fighting. Yeah. And obviously the parallels between Batman versus Superman, you can't ignore the parallels. There's a lot of similarities in the way this goes down. So Batman versus Superman was announced way before Civil War. Mm. And I think the Russos or Kevin Feige has gone on record saying that Civil War was inspired by Batman versus Superman. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. And the I both didn't... of them had the same release day. Oh, they were released on the same... No, so it was a chess oh, okay. game. Yeah. Um, Batman vs. Superman booked May something 2016. Uh, so it was it was a corporate chess game and then Civil War booked that same day. Yeah. And Batman vs. Superman moved up by two months to March. Yeah. And it was just like this, you know, Batman vs. Superman wanted to be the first, you know... Yeah. Uh, you know, like head, like head-to-head thing. Yeah, but that. Civil War, I think. And, you know, like, I think my favorite part of Civil War is when they had the Martha moment. So, you know, in uh-huh. Batman vs. Superman, they had Martha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in Civil War, it was when Cap had the shield, and then Tony said, "My father made that shield. You don't deserve. You don't to use deserve it. it. Yeah, yeah." And then Cap just threw it down. as he's walking away. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, so that's the Martha moment right there." Yeah, <laughs> and I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> I mean, dead parent, uh, you know, significance. Yeah. But my biggest gripe with this movie is that Captain America gave Tony a phone at the end of the film. <laughs> right, right. That, by the way, Tony, I know Thanos is coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> call me when you need me. If you ever need any help, yeah, I'll be there. Let's I, see how that plays out. In yeah, the I was like, what? Yeah. How could you? Sure, sure. You know, um, S- Sebastian Stan plays a really good man out of his time. Yeah. Thing. You know, like when he started remembering. Yep. And they were on the plane in Siberia, and I think Cap said, "Remember?" So they talked about a girl that one of them used to date. Oh yeah. And mm. um and, and Bucky said, "We're the only ones left." Mm. And I thought that that was like, "Oh, this is a really good like oh you really feel for these guys." Yeah, yeah. it's it's only that, that one scene and very short dialogue, less than like uh, two minutes. Yeah, and, and the, you you can get so much out of it. Yeah, and I feel like that's the strength of the Captain America movies as well. Yeah. Like when Bucky supposedly died, Cap was sitting alone trying to drink, and he told Peggy how he could never get drunk. Yeah, and I thought that was so smart because it just tells you what he's thinking okay so yeah that's what we have to say about Captain America Civil War in my opinion one of the best movies in the MCU currently well that's up for debate once Infinity, you know, Infinity War. War comes out uh, we, we only have three weeks to go yeah. for Infinity War so yeah get excited you know because it's happening and it's almost here up next we're going to be talking about Doctor Strange 
Not one of my favorite movies in the MCU. Definitely one of the weakest for me. One of the weakest for you. Definitely. Weaker than Age of Ultron? No, because by the time Civil War came out, the bar had been raised so high. Sure. Yeah. sure. You just thought they would keep topping these stories. And then suddenly, boom, like, what? That's we get it? we get another origin? Yeah. Okay. And, and that's it? Like, that's Stephen Strange? Mystic Sorcerer, that's it. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. All right. <laughs> if you have not watched Doctor Strange and you might not know a lot about his character, if you did see the Infinity War trailer and the last bit of trailer where, you know, Spider-Man goes, you know, say, like, who are you? And he goes, like, I'm Doctor Strange. And he says, oh, we're using our made-up names. That's not his made-up name. That's his real name. Stephen yep. Strange. He's an actual doctor. He's a gifted surgeon, the best at what he does. Dr. Stephen Strange. And he gets involved in a self-car accident, which crushes his hands and those are the tools that he needs to be the greatest surgeon that he is and because he doesn't have that anymore Mm. he's left as a broken man trying to find a way to fix himself so he gets this medical case file of someone who supposedly couldn't walk anymore because of spinal damage but now he's playing basketball but now he's up and about playing basketball and he finds this person this ex-patient of his who he passed on not his patient not his not his patient patient. he he was a patient in patient of somebody else of somebody else's in the in the re um the rehab. Rehab. Oh yeah, rehab. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a miracle story, and yes. he chased down the person. Mm. And the question was, how did you do this? And he says, okay, fine, I'll tell you. You have to go to this place in Nepal, mm. yeah. and that's where his journey kind of starts off because he meets Nepal or is Kathmandu the capital of Nepal? Kathmandu is the yeah. capital of Nepal. Okay, okay Nepal. just checking. Yeah. So he was he he went to Nepal. We see a scene where he gets robbed. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And then Moro came to his rescue. Yeah. And brought him to the temple to meet the ancient one. To meet the ancient one, and then he did and believe her yep and then and he has he got, the whole you know psychedelic travel through dimension thing yeah. and he goes teach me and then he got kicked out of the temple <laughs> Uh, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the villain in this movie uh, Caecilius I think Caecilius. it was played by Mads Mikkelsen Mads Mikkelsen who also is better known for playing uh, Galen Erso in Rogue One that's right he also or played the, the villain uh, yeah he also played the villain Hannibal. in Casino Royale and he played Hannibal, Hannibal in the TV show oh okay, so he was the guy who cried tears of blood yeah yeah okay okay I think his name was Le Shift Le Shift yeah, yeah. So Mads Mikkelsen plays the villain in Doctor Strange. He was part of the Order, yeah. I guess. And he, you know, found the scriptures and he said, no, I want this power dis- for, for myself. He discovered that the Ancient One was using the Black Arts. Yeah. Mm. And he did, did not want the, to The opening him. was him stealing from the Ancient Library. Yeah. yeah. yeah he tore a page out. Mm. He realized that there's Black Arts and the Ancient One is using it and didn't want to teach him because they, the Black Arts are more powerful. It's sort of like the Sith side of the uh, Jedi well done <laughs> so he recruited his own army of soldiers and they tried to take the ancient one down yeah okay and then you know we rejoin Doctor Strange on his journey to becoming the, the hero he just wanted it. to be cured I think yeah, but it, this greater destiny lay ahead of him yeah all he wanted was to be able to use his hands yeah. again mm. that was it and then but he became one of the more powerful students of the yeah. ancient one mm. and when she realized that she asked him to be the master of the Sanctum Sanctorium in New York because yep. the previous Master got killed by Cassilius. Yeah. And this is the movie where we see right off the bat in the beginning interdimensional travel through the portals that they make, and it looks like just seen high Raya fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it does they do yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they, do. Do, they do okay so I don't know like this movie is one of those movies where I sort of watch and I went huh I mean it's not bad but mm. at the same time it's not great yeah I feel like it sounded so good on paper okay like they're like oh you know so before the film came out I think everybody involved with the film was saying that this was a bold new direction for Marvel yes, yes. This, is a, this is a game changer it's a left turn yeah, yeah. it's dark it's trippy cause so this, is, this is where magic comes into play yeah, because yeah. the original Doctor Strange stories, but I think I could be wrong, but by Steve Ditko, were very trippy stuff. Yep. And then when I walked in the movie film, and I was like, this is the most Marvel movie they could have made. Mm, yeah. Um, I wasn't a fan of the comedy. I wasn't a fan of a lot of the slapstick stuff. And I just feel you have this potential to explore a multitude of possibilities, especially in terms of Infinite, you know, like the multiverse, yep. or time. Time itself is a factor in this. I Yet, mean, th- there is a time gem. Yeah. Like a time the, stone. In the eye of Agamotto yeah. itself was yeah. the yep. time stone. But I just felt it kept playing it safe like they would go oh, yeah. oh this is it we're about to take a risk no and it kept coming down to earth and I just wasn't a huge fan and then so Dormammu is one of the most formidable villains in the history of the Marvel Universe I wasn't a fan of how he just went Dormammu I came to bargain like he did it 
like a hundred times, and I was like, yeah, okay, come on, man. came back, got killed, came back, got yeah. killed, and I was in the, so I just felt that this film had great pieces, but overall the sum is just not like it, they didn't use it to, no, to its fullest extent. They didn't. But I do believe these characters, uh, Mordo, Strange, even Wong, I, I think they would work well in a different movie, just not their own. Mm-hmm. Like okay, Doctor yeah. Strange did quite w- well in Ragnarok. Spoiler alert: yeah. he appears in uh, Thor Ragnarok, yep. which we'll talk about um, in a couple of weeks. Yep, he points Thor into the direction of where his father, his is. father is. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. Just very disappointed, especially after the previous film being Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. Character of um, Stephen Strange is like a parallel to Tony Stark in Iron Man One, where this arrogant guy who has who who can do a lot of things for Iron Man for Tony Stark is building all those um, weapons. Yeah. For Doctor Strange is healing with his hands as a as a surgeon. So when they lost that, and then they went on a soul searching thing and journey, and then discover these uh, powers that they have. So that was also one of the complaints that people had but my complaint would be because they got Scott Derrickson as the director and because like I said they promised us so many things that this is gonna take a different turn from Marvel the the usual Marvel flair but at the end we still got that usual Marvel humor very Marvel-esque yeah, and uh, that was a very big disappointment for me the first time I watched it I just watched it again recently after having accepted all these it's not a bad movie it's serviceable and uh, I am interested to see a Doctor Strange 2 because of the characters that they've set up especially Mordor now that he's gone rogue and he will be the villain for Doctor yeah. Strange okay. going forward because uh, Mordor has this you know moment where his world is shattered and proven right that oh, the ancient one all this while has been using the dark energy Yeah, like what yeah. so then he goes off and goes you know what and, and the actor is amazing Chiwetel Ejiofor yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. really good yeah. so I guess that's all we have to say about Doctor Strange you know maybe not one of the best entries no. in the Marvel but that, to, its, to its credit if it came out around phase 1 it just would have oh, been yeah. one of the best yes yeah. if only it had come out maybe even in phase 2 mm. if it had come out in phase it's 2 this, it's these Captain two. America movies man they're just raising the bar <laughs> unfairly yeah <laughs> stop it Russo brother stop it <laughs> no we're kidding so that's uh, yeah that's <laughs> don't stop, don't stop. <laughs> that's our MCU recap this week uh, we talked about Captain America Civil War one of the best movies and Doctor Strange maybe not the best movie you know in MCU but yeah join us next week as we talk about the next two movies which will be Guardians of the Galaxy and Spider-Man Homecoming there we well go done. well done I think you're right maybe we'll, we'll check no no, uh, no I'm right alright that's our road to Infinity War and now we're gonna move on to the next bit of the show which is Oi. Apa liat-liat? Apa liat-liat? Hoi, kan semua kan? Apa liat-liat? Apa liat-liat? Eh, nak kuas mi kuah. Hmm. Yep, it's called Upper Liat Liat and it's what else we've been watching besides A Quiet Place this week. Del, what have you been watching? I saw The Hateful Eight for the first time. Really? Yeah. I don't know why it took me so long but I just keep forgetting. It was a long movie. Lo- as in the running time was yeah, long? Yeah, was yeah. Long. It was two and a half. Two or forty. Two or forty. And it's all, it's all in a cabin. <laughs> Not all but the first half the the first 40 minutes maybe was They're all outside. going to the cabin. Yeah, going to the cabin. <laughs> uh, really well set up. Going from, you know, the horse carriage yep. into the cabin and discovering who is inside the cabin. The the at the end I don't I didn't think that it ended well. Mm, I didn't Yeah, yeah it, it was too It was too rushed at the end. Like, rush or or a bit messy as and then well. You have the surprise Channing Tatum pop up. I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Channing Tatum should not pop Pop up suddenly out of nowhere uh, <laughs> for any movie. For any movie, um, <laughs> Uh, it's 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 a good movie. It's a good movie worth yeah. watching. I would say if you're, you're if you're a Quentin fan, I'm sure yeah. you would have watched it. Definitely, you would have watched but, it. But uh, this is the one of the weaker ones that has come up from Quentin Tarantino. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, all right. Naz, what have you been watching this week? I watched Dukun Ooh. on a Thursday night. <laughs> Dukun. <laughs> yeah, Dukun. Dukun in English means shaman or witch doctor. Okay. So for those who don't know. So it was actually filmed in 2005 or 2006. And it was supposed to be released in 2006. So it's a 12-year-old movie? Yeah. And so it's only showing now? Yeah. Um. All the actors there, they looked super young. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you know the actors? Uh, like you, yeah, you've yeah, seen them I, in I've other seen them, things yeah, I've seen them on, in other things I don't things, mean you know yeah. them <laughs> no, like no. on whatsapp <laughs> <laughs> I 
how did you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so they were really young. Uh, but it was a really good movie for the time. So it was still quite good now. Uh, I would say it wasn't scary. It was more creepy. It messed with your head. Gory as well for a Malay movie. And a bit gross too. Okay. Yeah. What's it about? It's about... Uh, it's roughly based on a real life person. So she's a singer. Kind of fit popular singer in the 70s. But at the same time, she's also a witch doctor. So it's like she was accused or framed for killing a politician. Okay. And um, and then this is like her story of how she's going to get prosecuted and her execution at the end, which happened in real life. And a lot of flashbacks of like what she did with people and how the detective is trying to, and oh. the lawyers are trying to, you know, so like piece, piece together, piece like together a profile that, of, yeah, you know, what like happened. What did she do? What really happened, you know? Because oh. there were a lot of rumors from people, like some people who don't want to believe in this like the spiritual yeah. side of it yeah so, so this is kind of like uh, you know did you ever watch Exorcism, Exorcism yeah. of Emily Rose yeah yeah it, it was sort of that way you know it was all retrospective yeah so it was a you know courtroom setting and, yeah yeah it's the same all, oh it's similar. the same okay. quite similar okay so, so it's uh, really good for the t- for like it's time but it's only showing now yeah Um. because like, I like, guess like rights issues right or issues whatever. yeah okay I think that's still showing as well this yeah, week yeah so it's... check it out if you guys like gory Malay movies okay <laughs> I have I've been sort of uh, watching some movies that I got on Blu-ray that just came in. I watched Jumanji, Ooh. Welcome to the Jungle on Blu-ray, and it's it's still good. It's still funny. <laughs> uh, I, I don't regret buying it on Blu-ray. And I just got the Blu-ray for Star Wars The Last Jedi, and I watched it yesterday. Oh. And that twist at the end is still something you know, that's really hard to swallow as yeah. a as a Star Wars fan, you know, where they yeah. killed off one of the main guys. If you don't know, then spoiler alert. But yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I was watching the bonus disc, and there was a documentary on it, and there was a part of that documentary where the the whole documentary is sort of set up like a vlog. Mm. Where they had a camera crew, one okay. camera following the director and, you know, his daily task as a director, you know, oh. going through the sets and working with the actors. And then, oh, you know, A bit like um, the room where yeah. he's hired another camera yeah, to film. that's right. Film. Yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly okay. like that. <laughs> right. And, uh, okay. and the part where they shot that scene where it was the last shooting day for Mark Hamill. Oh. And it was, a, it was a scene that we sort of caught a glimpse of in episode 7, Force Awakens, where he's kneeling down and he puts his hand on R2 and he's crying because the Jedi Temple, he built is is burnt down there was a scene like that in the movie in the in the movie in the movie okay i forgot okay Okay. uh, or i blocked it out they (sighs) they showed a glimpse of it in episode seven and then they showed the full story of how that jared temple was burnt down Uh, in episode eight and that was mark hamill's last shooting day so he was there and he you know they shot the scene and he was you know crying because you know the jared temple's burning and he yelled cut and Mark Hamill broke down and you know put his fist on the ground and he couldn't get up and he was crying for real because he he knew that that was the last of it Aww. It, it was heartbreaking to see um, oh man yeah but yeah Kai if you're listening I fully understand why you don't like this movie so much you know because the hero is basically gone oh well um, so yeah. yeah that's that's Ugh. that's this week uh, for Upper Let Liat I think we've done another show yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, we did. Uh, Unless you didn't record it. <laughs> no, I did. Uh, thanks so much for listening. If you want to get in touch with us here on the show, of course, you can do so via our email account. That's the Wang Crew at gmail.com. We're on Woo. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And you can also catch us on Spotify, TuneIn, iTunes Podcast, and Woo. Google Play Music. We're so, everywhere. Yeah, no, ex- no excuses anymore, guys. So that's going to be it for The Wine Crew this week. This is Kev signing off. I'd like to thank my co-host again for being on the show. I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>